What's up guys, Van here from Magmavi Farms and welcome to the fourth and final part of this four part DIY light series. I already covered part one and two which is just a simpler DIY build and I encourage you to watch those before you continue. But in order to properly understand this final build, you at least need to watch part three. Hopefully you already watched it and are as excited as I am for this final part. So let's start off by looking at what you will need for this build. First of all you'll need a heatsink. This is not a proper heatsink but rather an aluminium door frame that our local hardware store sells. They are less than half the price of regular heatsinks. I also had to cut out parts of this heatsink to make it fit into the light fixture that I want to replace it with. You will also need a pair of pliers, an on off switch, a plug, a soldering iron. This was the cheapest one I could find when I was still a student and it hasn't broken yet so I see no reason to replace it except that it does not work properly. You will also need LED base plates and you'll need the LEDs. These are all three watt 6500 Kelvin lights. There is a small slit on the one side of the light. This indicates that it's the negative side of the LED. Double sided tape, I prefer the thick one in this case. Electrical wire, a sharp knife or scissors, electrical tape and super glue. This is the bulk thermal paste and it will last you a long time. But you can also use CPU thermal compound that you use for computer CPUs. And because it's in a syringe, it makes life a lot easier. You'll also need a soldering wire, try to get a thinner one as it works much easier. And lastly, you need drivers to change the power from the wall to something the LED can utilize. I have two drivers here and one is strong enough to power four LEDs and the other one can power three LEDs. I already explained how to match the LED drivers with the LEDs in part three and you're more than welcome to watch that before you continue watching this. By using two drivers, I will have more control on how much light I give my plants. You will most probably use one like this. It can power up to 10 3 watt LEDs. But I am making a light for a 1.5 feet Jebo tank, so 10 LEDs will be too strong. Now that you know what you will need for this build, let's start to do some planning. This will be my layout. The driver on the right will power the top 4 LEDs and will have its own switch, and the driver on the left will power the other 3 LEDs and will also have its own switch. If you plan to only use one driver, your layout might look similar to this. The next step is to add soldering wire to the positive and negative side of the LED base plates. Just make sure that you add it to the vertical blocks and not the horizontal blocks of the base plate. This can be very difficult if the base plate has some sort of oil on it, so wipe it down with toilet paper before you use it. I was too lazy to get up and fetch them, so I struggled for a good 5 minutes and ended up applying the first two a bit sketchy. So I redid them. You'll eventually get the hang of it though. The next step is to add the thermal base to the center of the base plates. But before we can do this, we need to align them. I align the negative sides of the base plate as well as the LEDs to point in my direction. I then applied the thermal paste to about 3 quarters of the size of a single rice grain. I did this for all the base plates. After we've added the thermal compound to all the LED base plates, we must just be careful that we don't take too long in the next step, otherwise the thermal paste might dry out. But the most important part comes now. The negative side of the LED should match the negative side of the base plate. Now you can add the LED onto the thermal paste while melting the wire that you soldered to the base plate so that the LED can stay in place. What is important here is to make sure that the LED fits snugly onto the base plate and that the thermal compound are spread evenly underneath it while leaving no space for air and while making sure the ends are soldered onto the base plate properly. Now because you and I don't do this every day it might not look amazing but it will get the job done. Now you need to calculate the space that is needed between the LEDs and place a mark where you want them. If you want to know how much space each LED needs for heat dissipation, please watch part 3. Now you need to make sure that all the positive sides are facing the same way. On the top, all of the positive sides are facing left and at the bottom, all the positive sides are facing to the right. Now you can apply the thermal compound to the bottom of each base plate. I placed about the size of a rice grain on each base plate. Just make sure when you place them back, they are facing the right way. You need to add a drop of super glue to make sure they stay in place. Once you are sure they are secured, you can go and apply the double sided tape to the LED drivers and then onto the heat sinks or wherever you think is the best place for the build that you are doing. Yeah. 
Now all you have to do is take your electrical wire and split it in the middle. You just need enough to go from the driver to the LED, as well as between the LEDs and finally from the LED back to the driver. Now once this is done, measure the distance from one silver block of the LED base plate to the other silver block of the other base plate and just cut a piece big enough to fit between them. If that is done, split the end of each wire. Okay, so now the glue should be semi-dry and you can go ahead and add soldering wire to the silver sides of the base plate for the wires we have just cut. Now once this is done, you can add the electrical wire by soldering it to the base plate. Now that all the LEDs are connected, we can connect the driver to the LEDs. Take the positive wire of the driver and connect a long piece of single electrical wire to it. You can solder it together and then use electrical tape to cover it up. The driver's live or positive wire must enter the base plate on the positive side and exit on the negative side. It should then enter the next LED on the positive side and so on. When you get to the last LED, you can connect the negative wire of the driver to the last LED. I went ahead and added the plug, the switches and I finished connecting the last driver. When you are done it should look something like this and all you need now is to test it to see if it works. And that's it, now you guys can make your own LED lights to your custom tanks. Here you can see my light after I have fitted it to the Jebo tank. I will be doing a Monte Carlo dry start in this tank in a future video and I look forward to show you guys how to do that. But that's it for this video guys, if this video sucked you know what to do but if it was awesome get subscribed, press that like button and check out our other videos. I hope you guys learned something today and as always keep it simple.